Kaluthira is a resplendent seaside town. Just 43 kilometers from Colombo, it has some of Sri Lanka's pristine beaches. Our story begins here. It is said that the sacred Bodhi tree in Anuradhapura sprouted 32 saplings which were planted throughout the island. At the entrance to Kaluthira town, a Bodhi tree believed to be several hundred years old flourished. During British occupation, the government agent's residence was set up close to this tree. This structure still exists to date. During the 19th century, the British decided to run a railroad through these premises destroying the tree. However, protests led by a Buddhist layman, Sandhanayaka Upasanka, stopped this action and the tree survived. After regaining independence in 1948, the newly installed government led by Prime Minister Right Honorable D.S. Nanayaka was requested by Sir Cyril de Souza to keep the Kaluthara Bodhi site for religious purposes only. Sir Cyril de Souza, a proctor and notary public who was also a successful lawyer, was a great philanthropist. Along with six other lawyers, he set up the Kaluthara Bodhi Trust. While persuading the officials to move the government agent office, he went about with vigor to construct and set in motion the plans for a hollow dagaba. The foundation was laid in 1964, and after 10 years of construction, the pinnacle of the chaitya was laid. Today the Kaluthara Bodhi stands majestic at the entrance to the Kaluthara town beside the scenic Kaluganga access through the Gaul road and the two connecting bridges brings you to the entrance of the premises the Gaul road was built through this site splitting the complex into two sections the Udamalua and the Pahalamalua the Dagaba stands a imposing 56.4 meters high with a diameter of 30 meters the circumference is 91.4 meters and the dagaba is set within a square boundary a wall with semicircular enclosures creating a unique architectural style the udamalua has the sacred bow tree within a gold fence perimeter the bodhigara or bow tree house is a architectural feature around a bow tree meant to protect it symbolically and somewhat literally pilgrims generally circle the tree and make offerings there is also a section to light lamps with coconut oil or plant incense sticks On entering the main hollow dagaba there is a cavernous inner chamber Pilgrims make offerings of flowers to the various Buddha images or statues placed around another smaller dagaba This inner chamber dagaba houses the relics deposited in 1980 The entire circumference of the chaitya is also decorated with murals stories from the jataka tales once you descend the stairs you can access the other side of the road through an underpass constructed for devotees the kaluthara bodhi has in addition to the bow tree and dagaba an arms hall preaching hall and several other buildings all created towards facilitating the dissemination of the dhamma as well as hosting various religious ceremonies you are now at the palamalua the lower section This too has a bodhi tree, the original tree. There is also an image house for devotees. This section has a small dagaba along with a courtyard for praying, meditating or just relaxing. The lower section also has a bodhi gara constructed around another bodhi tree and this is made completely out of granite. This bodhi gara has a more inclusive design to enable devotees to make offerings, pour water or just meditate or contemplate. within the compound the kaluthara bodhi trust is sustained by contributions from the public and pink cates or collection boxes for pilgrims are kept alongside the road which curves itself through the upper and lower sections motorists and pedestrians of all walks of life regardless of culture religion or economic status are constantly breaking journey here to deposit a coin and receive a blessing for the onward journey 
The collections from these offerings go towards numerous activities of the Kalutara Bodhi Trust, including post-tsunami housing, funding for elders' homes, funding children's homes, equipping libraries, and numerous scholarships and educational programs for children, to name a few. On a Poya or full moon day, where there is an increase in crowds, there are many additional activities taking place. The blood donations by people towards the National Blood Bank is notable as several hundred volunteers participate. Also on this day, the temple prepares several thousand meals for the people observing SIL or action towards following the Eightfold Path of Buddhism. The broad objective of the Kalutara Bodhi Trust remains the fostering and promotion of the Buddha Sasana. In line with this, there is an annual function held to bestow scholarships to monks, along with books and assistance to novice monks. The Kalutara Bodhya is unique in that it has no resident monks, and the monks to attend the proceedings come into the premises via Perahara. In the presence of the trustees of the Kalutara Bodhi Trust and several senior bhikshus, there is a few orations at the function of the Dharma Shala. In addition to the scholarships and educational assistance, the novice monks are given textbooks with a view to enhancing their knowledge of Pali and Buddhism. Today, Kalutara town has a majestic monument which is visible from afar. Sir Cyril Disoisa's statue stands below the main Dagaba in the compound overlooking the road. A reminder that his ceaseless work to promote Buddhism continues to be watched over and that the Chaitya above, the pinnacle of his achievements, leaves an indelible mark on the country.